Hello and welcome to this webinar on multidisciplinary approaches to hepatitis C treatment. My name is Walter Cullen and I'm a family physician and professor of urban general practice at the UCD School of Medicine. We'd like to thank two sources of funding which have helped us develop this webinar. We'd like to thank Ireland's National Forum for Teaching and Learning who funded the EPREP project. We'd also like to thank the European Commission who funded the HEPCARE Europe project. This webinar has been developed by a multidisciplinary group of colleagues from the UCD School of Medicine, the Mater Misericordiae Hospital in Dublin and Community Response in Dublin. During this webinar we would like you to learn about interprofessional practice and apply this theory to looking after patients at risk of hepatitis C. We'll be revising some essential baseline knowledge about hepatitis C itself before then in considering how interprofessional practice can enhance patient care. Let's remind ourselves of some key facts. Hepatitis C is a common problem globally. 170 million people have chronic infection and are therefore at risk of chronic liver disease, cirrhosis, liver failure, hepatocellular carcinoma and dying of these conditions. In Ireland, the most common reason why people become infected with hepatitis C is injecting drug use. For patients who are at risk of hepatitis C, it is therefore important that we assess for hepatitis C and other bloodborne viruses, such as hepatitis B, HIV, and also advise on safe drug use and how to minimise transmission. For those patients who test positive for hepatitis C, we should address lifestyle issues and especially explore psychosocial issues which the person might have. If appropriate, we should immunise against hepatitis B or hepatitis E, and also if appropriate, we should refer for evaluation in a specialist liver or infectious diseases centre. For those patients who are linked in with such centres, it is essential that the family physician provides ongoing care, especially psychosocial support and monitoring for chronic liver disease. In recent years, there have been exciting developments in hepatitis C management. Near patient testing involving a mouth swab means that a blood test is no longer essential if we want to make a timely diagnosis in our clinics. The advent of vibration controlled transient elastography, also known as fibre scans, means that assessing whether or not a patient has advanced liver disease can now be done much less invasively than previously. Finally, the emergence of new oral treatments, direct acting antiviral agents, means that oral and non injectable treatment is now the norm. Let us consider a patient we might typically encounter in our clinics. For the last four years, Luca has been attending his family physician each week for opiate substitution and methadone treatment. He was diagnosed with hepatitis C 10 years ago, but has never had this problem treated. Recently, he read a blog post about new treatment options that can cure this disease and wants you to prescribe this treatment for him. Please take 30 seconds to consider what issues you might wish to explore with Luca during this and subsequent consultations. Answers which are commonly provided in response to this question by students at your stage include the following. What is his hepatitis C status? Has he been tested? Does he engage in any ongoing risk behaviour? What about other bloodborne viruses? What about alcohol and other substance use? What about psychosocial issues? Mental health problems? Does he have any supports or treatment for these? Is he ready to begin treatment? Is he on any other medication and does he have any other medical problems? And finally, what is his expectation and understanding of hepatitis C? So, after you complete your initial assessment, you establish that Luca has moderate cirrhosis due to chronic hepatitis C. Please take 30 seconds to consider what healthcare professionals should now be involved in his care and also consider how might a nurse 
and a pharmacist contribute to his ongoing management. So, a large number of healthcare professionals and social care professionals would clearly have an important role to play in his ongoing management. I'd like to introduce our colleague, Ms. Carol Murphy from the Mater Misericordiae Hospital, to tell us about the role of the nurse in Luca's management. So firstly, the nurse's role is um, involved with uh, identifying patients who are at risk of hepatitis C. This might be people who inject drugs, prisoners, or people who may have had tattoos in the past. Um, so the nurse is involved in screening and advising the patient on when to re-screen. For patients that are hepatitis C positive, the nurse um, is responsible for monitoring the patient and ensuring that they're linked into services. So essentially the nurse liaises between primary and secondary care to ensure the patient um, is attending appointments and is being monitored and the disease is being monitored. Um, the nurse is also involved in assessing the patient for suitability for treatment. I'd now like to introduce our colleague, Ms. Maureen O'Connor, who will tell us a bit about the role of the pharmacist. The pharmacist role is quite a multifaceted and quite an interesting role within the team. Um, I would first become involved with the patient from the point that they have been approved for treatment and they're due to start on treatment. The first element would be part of the MDT discussion with the medical and nursing staff around the choice of regime for the patient. So we would discuss factors such as stage of liver disease, the type of hepatitis C they have, other comorbidities, other medication that they're prescribed, and choose the most optimum regime for the patient based on all of those factors. We'd also take account of clinical evidence and guidelines and maybe real life data as well to select the best re regime for the patient. I would then do a very comprehensive review of the patient's medications to identify any drug-drug interactions that there may be. I would make recommendations for alterations to the drug treatment or to the drugs that the patient is on or identify monitoring that is required as a result of these drug-drug interactions. This is quite a central role to the success of the hepatitis C treatment. It ensures efficacy and safe treatment for the patient while they're on treatment. I would then be the next step, I guess, would be the dispensing of the medication for the patient, um, providing information leaflets that I have drawn up for them around the medication treatment, and also providing pill boxes or dose set boxes if the patient requires this to help with the compliance of their regime. When the patient starts treatment, the pharmacist would meet them and provide a thorough education on the regime for them, discussing the dosing, the importance of compliance, and identifying any potential side effects that they may encounter. While a patient is on treatment, when they come to the clinic to meet the nurse and the doctor, they'd also meet the pharmacist. This generally may be every two to four weeks. And again, through those visits, I would chat with the patient, see how they're getting on with treatment, manage any side effects that they may be experiencing, and kind of help to get the best out of the regime for the patient. Um, I'm a source of information for the patient at any point throughout the treatment. They can contact me directly if they have any queries about their hepatitis medicines or their other medicines. I would be a source of information and work collaboratively with my nursing and medical colleagues around all of the treatments and give information if they have uh, require information about any patient's other medicines while they're on treatment or their hepatitis medicines work together in that respect. And I guess the other element would be the financial aspects of, these, of the hepatitis treatment, managing the financial part of it, ensuring that a patient is eligible for treatment and that reimbursement is provided for the cost of the medicines to the hospital. Having considered the role each healthcare professional might play in Lucas care, I'd like you to take 30 seconds to consider how a multidisciplinary approach to care can enhance the care he receives. To help us answer this question, Let's hear again from our colleagues.
So a multidisciplinary approach is essential really, um, especially in these patients. Many of them have very complex histories, they may have addiction issues, they may be um, involved in crim criminal behaviour, they also may have mental health issues. So it's important to have an effective team working with these patients, um, such as the, G the GP, the nurse, their key worker, addiction services, and then secondary care services, their consultant and the nurse and the pharmacy as well. By all healthcare professionals working together, it's a more patient-centred and more patient-focused approach to treatment, thereby more likely to have a better outcome for the patient. Each individual member of the MDT, medical, nursing, pharmacy, will bring their own knowledge and skills to the situation and maybe focus on a different element. And They're then the expert in that area. And by working together, they can provide a better outcome for the patient, better results, more successful treatment. We can all learn off each other as well and it's a more proactive learning situation and thereby again increase the knowledge that we give to each other which has better outcomes for the patient. So we've examined how interprofessional practice can help us to look after Luca's hepatitis C. Now I'd like to spend a little time looking at the theory. In 2010 Jill Tisseltway conducted a large review and from this developed a framework to help us understand what we need to know about interprofessional practice. She identified six broad areas and we will look at these in turn. Firstly, the key member of any healthcare team is the patient themselves. It is absolutely essential that every other member of the team recognises this, understands his or her needs and the team collectively works towards his or her best interests. Secondly, every member of the healthcare team will have different areas of expertise. Collectively, these ensure the patient will get the best care possible. It's however important that we challenge any misconceptions we might have about each other's roles and ensure that every member of the healthcare team continues to develop his or her skill set and competencies while recognising that we all have a part to play. In any team, effective communication is key. Making sure we communicate key clinical information and listen to others' ideas can help us to achieve this. For patients like Luca, who have multiple coexisting medical, psychological and social problems, it is especially important that teams make collective key decisions regarding patient care. There is a whole literature about effective team working in its own right. We know from this literature that healthcare teams work effectively if it is clearly agreed who's going to lead the team, identify a person who will chair or facilitate meetings, recognise and respond to any problems that might arise from dysfunctional team dynamics and ensure that the team is formally accountable for its decisions and actions. There are many barriers to team working and it is important that we address these for team working to succeed. Sometimes these can be very simple things like ensuring each member of the team has protected time during which they can attend meetings. There are a number of ethical issues involved in interprofessional practice. Acknowledging and respecting the views and ideas of other healthcare professionals, being able to cope with uncertainty are both key parts of practicing as a healthcare professional. Tolerating differences, misunderstandings and shortcomings in our colleagues is important, but so too is ensuring that these issues don't compromise patient care. The final area of our framework for successful interprofessional practice is being able to continuously reflect on and learn from our practice and apply this to our everyday care of patients. Reflecting on our relationship with other team members transferring learning to patient care, looking at the learning needs of the team, identifying common professional interests and learning from each other are all important aspects of being a reflective practitioner. Thank you for taking part in this webinar. We hope you found it of value in helping you to understand what is interprofessional practice and how it might help you look after patients like Luca. To conclude, 
we'd like you to take a few seconds to write down what you've learned from this webinar. To help with this, we've asked our colleagues to share with us what advice they would give a student about adopting a multidisciplinary approach to patient care in practice. My advice would be to listen and listen to those around you, those that you're working with, listen to the experience that they're bringing to the team, um, be confident of your own knowledge and your own experience that you're also bringing to the team, be effective in how you communicate your knowledge and by how you're listening to other people and working together. Uh, so firstly I would say um, hepatitis C is a very sensitive issue um, and that coupled with addiction uh, can create a lot of emotion for a patient so it's important that the student develops a trusting relationship with the patient. Um, good communication is essential and so is empathy um, and it's also important that the student is aware of the patient's history, what's going on, their social circumstances, what's going on from at the moment, what drugs they're using, what alcohol they're using, um, and also what services there are for them so that you can get them linked into addiction services if necessary um, or any other social services that may assist in them keeping up their appointments. Thank you.